Tenten po pala bawal na ang cake. So Father, we would like to start by actually asking, because I've noticed this, I'm, sometimes I'm experiencing this, I feel that the world today is too noisy sometimes because of social media, all of those uh, pressure to keep up with the people around you. And for me, sometimes it's challenging to actually hear the voice of God and His peace amidst all of those. So I'd like to ask that question. What tip can you give us or how can we draw nearer and lean into God more this season? I think the word now is very important. On Wednesday, you're going to hear now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. We say the Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Those two times. So the word now is very important. Why? Because five seconds ago is gone. You don't know what's going to happen five seconds from now. We just don't. We don't spend enough time in the moment. And when we're in the moment, then the future and the past are unimportant. It's kind of just sitting at the feet of the Lord, knowing he's there with you. And a lot of people will say, well, how will I know the will of God? You can get some help through spiritual direction, speaking with a friend, praying the rosary. But the best way to understand the will of God is just to be with him in the moment and trusting that if you sincerely are seeking his will, he must find a way to reveal it to you. So in that singular quiet moment, our minds are always going to the future, aren't they? But just being in the moment with him is going to allow him to be closer. You see, he doesn't move. It's us that are drawn to be closer to him and just be quiet. I remember one time that I, it was my first time to preach at the cathedral in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And I got up, Lord be with you, gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, and everyone was seated. And I just stood there for two minutes and I said, nothing. And everybody's kind of, uh, and then you could hear, oh, maybe he forgot what he's going to say. And then I said to them, silence. What do you do with it? What does it do to you? Silence can make us comfortable when all our bills are paid, when we're getting affirmed, when we're being successful. But sometimes that silence is noisier than the traffic on Edsa on a Friday night. And our Lord says, just come to me in the moment. Be with me and trust me with your future. No more is necessary. We make things very complicated. And one of the attributes of God is simplicity. So simply at an adoration chapel, not feeling as though you have to produce anything or even think of things in the future, but just, I want to be with you, Lord. I want to do your will. That's all. No more than that. Don't make it complicated, but live and pray in the moment only. That's beautiful. Can you say to the person beside you, be in the moment? And answer that person, now. 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 <laughs> Iba iniisip niyang katabi mo siya. Now. <laughs> Ganda. Father Bob, we are in this uh, coming into the Lenten uh, season, and we all know about it helps us, it ushers in our prayer and fasting. That's what we do during Lent. By the way, it's not just magpapapayat lang at hindi, hindi kakain ng kung ano-ano. At it's about prayer and fasting. And, and Father Bob, our audience, there are those people who have been with the Lord, serving the Lord, been with the community for so long. And sometimes we need to recalibrate or recheck what prayer and fasting means for us. But there are also people here who have been attending for the first time or new in their relationship with the Lord. How can we do our prayer and fasting in your First opinion? of all, this simple truth. More than your prayers and more than your fasting. And you've heard me say this, some of you. More than your prayers and more than your fasting, 
what the Lord really wants from you is to actually really believe that he really does love you. It starts there. The Lenten season, in the preface of Lent that we'll do on Wednesday, it says, each year you give us this joyful season. Joyful? No, that's Christmas. No, it's Lent. Because the whole purpose of it is to bring us through Lent to joy. And I'm going to give you a simple way of doing this. I call it a simple Lenten plan. A few years ago, I shared it when we were face to face again. And the simple Lenten plan is very doable in its diversity. If you think back to any Lenten season that you've ever been through, did you ever find yourself at the end of Lent saying, boy, those promises I made on Ash Wednesday and my, my fervor to really get to know the Lord. And then by the end, I gave up this or I didn't do that. And you kind of say at the end of it in preparing for Holy Week, well, maybe next year I'll do better. Well, I'm going to give you a way to make your land absolutely joyful, bringing you closer to God and to each other. Okay. On Wednesday, you fast and abstain from me. You know, you can read about what. But I'm going to start with all the Thursdays of Lent. On the first Thursday and all of them after that, you're going to declare a fast from that delicious meal that we call chismis. <laughs> chismis doesn't even feel like a sin because when we hear it, we say, oh, really? But what is chismis? It's taking delight in the sins of other people so I don't have to look at my own. So, Lord, you have to pray in the morning before each of these things. Lord, I'm really going to need your grace today. I know we're going to get together at lunch. It's going to be a group. When they begin talking about someone else, or am I tempted to talk about someone else, let me either say something affirming about that person or simply to say, excuse me, I have to go. That's the Thursdays of Lent. Fasting from gossip. Fridays of Lent, another fast. Not about not eating meat, but on Fridays, Lord, I'm really going to need your grace today because this is so easy to do and nobody's going to hear me. Give me the grace today to not make negative mental judgments about people. The way they walk, the way they talk, where they're from, the way they're dressed, the color, are those 101 little things that people at school or at work, irritate me. When that happens, Lord, let me do what you did with your apostles. They weren't saints those three years. He always saw the worst in them, but he dug deeper and did the more difficult thing. Bring out the best. Lord, when I'm having those negative mental judgments today and they're coming to my mind, let me simply say a prayer for the person that I'm going to judge. Okay, so you've done two very powerful things in two days. You haven't talked about anybody and you haven't made ne negative mental judgments. That's not easy to do. That's why you need to call upon the Lord in his grace. Saturdays, I know you're very busy on Saturday shopping day. You have to go to the mall, get the groceries. I understand that. On Saturday, 10 minutes long, chaplet of divine mercy. If you've never said it, you can Google it. It takes maybe 11 minutes to say. It's, it, it's really a beautiful prayer. And who do you offer it for? The souls in purgatory. When you do all 55 of those bees and say, Lord, for those who just arrived, those who are suffering deeply because they have so much growing to do spiritually, first three. Next three, for those that have been there the longest, the next three, for those that are just about to go into heaven, and then maybe for one person you know who has died. Now understand something. When you say those prayers, those souls know it is you that are saying them. And guess what? They pray for you. And then they get to heaven, they pray even more powerfully for you. So you're going to connect with those in eternal life on Saturdays chaplet of divine mercy and then the second Sunday of Easter you'll come and receive the plenary indulgence and the sacrament of penance Sundays instead of reading the bad news and the inquirer the star or the post I'm going to take the same amount of time and I'm going to pray for 
I'm going to take the time and read the Word of God for those 30 minutes. That's Sundays. Monday, M, easy to remember. Mama Mary, Rosary. An opportunity to pray for 55 people by name. First, your relatives, then your friends, then priests, and fourth, pray for your enemies. If you're a good Catholic, you should have at least 10. <laughs> people that don't like you, people that gossip about you, people who criticize you for coming to the feast, pray for them by name. They might not change when you do that, but you will. You can't help praying for somebody without you changing spiritually, okay? So that's Monday. Tuesday's the difficult one. I used to call this before smartphones, textless Tuesday. But Tuesdays, think about the amount of time that you spend on social media. From midnight Monday night to midnight Tuesday night, while on social media at all. Texting for business, yes. But using some of that time that you would ordinarily do to maybe go to an adoration chapel, or go to your room for quiet connection with our Lord in the moment. And then finally, on Wednesday is when you put it all into practice. And you've heard me speak about this before. Those who are new here, maybe you haven't. Very simple. You make or buy a sandwich. At lunchtime, you go out, but look for someone that looks like they might be hungry. And you go up to them and say, I have a little extra, would you like to share? Yeah, Anuang Pangal and Mo, ask their name. Nobody ever asked their name. And then say, my name is, here's your sandwich. I'm having a rough day. Will you pray for me? I have a project to complete. Yeah, and I said, and I'll pray for you too. Good, let's have a selfie. You like to take a selfie with celebrities, but how about a poor person? That's what the Pope encouraged us to do. Not only to give, but to encounter. And he said, then we become the beggars because we have so much to learn from them. So, Thursday's fasting, Jesus, Friday's fasting, negative mental judgments, souls in purgatory, chapel of divine mercy, Sundays, no reading the paper online or paper itself. That time I'll use a read the word. Monday's the rosary, Tuesday's no social media, and Wednesday, put it all into practice. It's doable in its diversity. And if you do that, I promise you, by the end of Lent, you will be joyful. Powerful. Amen. Amen. So, dear Dr. Bob, you just gave us the prescription for... What's your, what's your takeaway, John Ben, sa seven days na yan? What's the hardest one for you? I think social media is the hardest. <laughs> That's a Tuesday, right? Yeah. Textless Tuesday or fasting from social but media. But I think it's a good activity. Yep. Sa akin ako, Fridays, negative mental judgments. Ah, so, that's hey, also hard. Yeah, at least patapos tayong trabaho, di ba? Yeah. Yan yung pag may nakikita ang ka-opisina. Oh, confess ko na lang sa face to Sunday. <laughs> that's really good. That was really good. You got that? Seven, seven days? Powerful. That's a very practical. Thank you for that practical approach to prayer and fasting uh, this season. Good reminder. I think we need to wrap up, but I have one important question, Father Bob. There are people, they cannot pray. They cannot do their fast. Mm -hmm. They feel far away from God. And, you know, prayer and fasting bridges the relationship between you and God. But sometimes we can identify, or maybe not that conscious, sometimes the biggest block is unforgiveness. And, and not forgiving themselves for what they have done against God and to themselves, what would you say to any one of us who could relate to that? Forgiving ourselves is very difficult to do and letting go of the guilt for a very simple but truthful reason. Whenever we do something, especially if it's very embarrassing or it's heavy or we've been carrying it a long time, Sometimes people come to me 20 years away and they figure they have to have a photographic memory, but they come in feeling so filled with guilt. And then I'll give them encouragement as all our priests here will do and give them absolution and they leave still feeling guilty. 
and they can't forgive themselves. That's one of the penances I give for people who have been away a long time. Go to the CR, look in the mirror, see the man, the woman, the teenager that has just been forgiven, and then say to that person in the mirror, I forgive me too. But it's hard to do for this simple reason. We think we should be punished. So we hold on to the guilt. But Jesus took the punishment that we think we should get on the cross. And that's why the Pope very beautifully in his wisdom said this. He said, when you go to confession, you're going to be feeling guilty and, gee, now I got to, and then we can't forgive ourselves. He said, when you go into that confessional, know that it was God's grace of repentance that drew you there. Secondly, he said, when you go in, do you realize how joyous Jesus is? There's more, there's a party in heaven over one repentant sinner, as if there were 99 that aren't. Everybody's in need of repentance. So when you go to confession and make a really good one, maybe you haven't been there in over two years, maybe 20 years, every priest that hears confessions here is compassionate. They will not lecture you. We will not let our humanness and sinfulness get in the way of what our Lord wants to do with you. And he wants you very simply to let go. You know what Padre Pio said? And this surprised me when I read it about a month ago. He said, when you go to confession and you receive absolution and you look back and still think you're that person that committed that sin and you feel still guilty, that's not coming from God. He said, it's coming from Satan who has a mission. And that mission simply is to discourage you, to hang on to the guilt and not think you could ever be forgiven so how do you forgive yourself? First, by receiving the absolution. And secondly, Jesus does not want to punish me. I'm punishing myself. Satan's happy when I do that. Rather, Lord, my unforgiveness of myself, I give it to you. And thank you for your goodness to me. So I encourage you, if you haven't been to confession in a long time, but particularly if you're carrying something really, really heavy, there's no sin I haven't heard before, nor our priests. We hear them all. I never heard murder, okay? But we have heard it all, so we're not going to be shocked by anything you say. I'm delighted and amazed by the courage that you would have coming in and trusting me to open up that, which is so heavy, I admire you when you do that. People think, oh, when he sees me again, he's going to remember what I told him. Uh-uh. I have a great respect for your courage in opening that up. And we pray for the gift of forgetfulness so that you will be ran, brand new. And that's why I say to do that, to choose God, is to become aware that you are known and loved beyond anything your imagination can conceive. Known in love before anyone thought of you, before anyone knew your name. That's St. Benedict. And he said that to us because that's the most important thing. You are lovable, forgivable, redeemable. So forgive yourself simply. Amen. I wish we had more time, but uh, to follow through what Father Bob has mentioned, we have the Sacrament of Confession, uh, Reconciliation mm -hmm. available uh, at the second floor. So if you are called, you felt that God's drawing you near, go to confession now, ongoing, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. today. We made it available for you so you can immediately catch up. That's right. Now is the acceptable time. If something that we've said here or in my homily that I said touches you and says, gee, I think I'd like to go, know that the Holy Spirit and God's grace are already within you. Amen. And Amen. it's not coming from, we're just instruments, okay? But the beautiful mystery is that God's grace. So you go. Amen. You go. And I promise you, when you come out, you just simply say, that's it, Lord. I begin again. Mm -hmm. And any move backward is not coming from Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's coming from Satan who wants to discourage you. Don't be discouraged, but have courage 
and go to confession. Amen. Amen. A big hand to God for sending us Father Bob. So, pag nawala yung katabi niya, baka nag-confess lang. Okay. <laughs> Wag mo na masyadong mo judge. judge. Uh, okay. <laughs> Father Bob, can we all can we stand? Can you pray for all of us as we go through this Lent? You we know we celebrated mass already, but it's always great to come to get it from you. Let us pray. God our heavenly Father, you are indeed Papa God. You love us so much. Every person that is here today, you called them and they said yes. Amen. You love them so much for being here. And you really want to let them know that you love them so much that the only one that you see right now is each of them. That's a glorious mystery. So as you begin the Lenten season on Wednesday, may the Lord Jesus be with you to protect you, go before you to guide you, stand behind you to give you strength and know that he is walking along with you through this sentence, uh, this Lenten season for the beautiful, joyful experience that it can be. And to that end, I bless each of you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See you again. God bless. Amen. Amen.